Alright, just got back from day two of the South Sound board game convention, and I had, I have to say, just in, in overall sense, I had a lot better time this time. I was in a better spirits, I think. Um, the work week was behind me. And um, having resolved to play non-arbitrary games, I ended up playing a lot of games unexpectedly that I enjoyed. I enjoyed, I think, every single game I played and was engaged throughout the day. Um, so what did I play? Well, first was probably my most treasured experience of the convention, a game of Crusoe's Planet. I was uh, looking a, a fellow who, I, I don't know if I've seen him since the last convention, but played with him in the past, very astute gamer, very competitive gamer, very cutthroat gamer. Um, was going through my games with me, we're kind of deciding what to play, and he was interested in playing Crusoe's Planet. So we played, um, we started to get set up, kind of gathered people to our table, um, and one of the things that kind of keeps me from bringing Crusoe's Planet out more, I think, despite the, well, one of the things is the components. A lot of people are really into components, and when they see this, with the roll and move mechanism, they're a little turned off, maybe, I feel like. I feel like it's kind of like if I go um, into a dinner party and I'm maybe not dressed the same way as other people. I'll still go in, but I'll kind of, I kind of feel like maybe other people um, feel like I'm too dirty for them. Um, but I'm not. I take a shower and I brush my teeth. Uh, anyway, so the other one, the other thing that kind of stops me or slows me from bringing it out is trying to decide exactly what game of Crucible's Planet you're going to play. Crucible's Planet has so many games in this one game and it's so hard to decide. I guess I could just kind of take a lead and decide based on what I want to do. Um, but we did it through this course of process. This person who was interested in playing the game wanted to do the most complicated one possible, but there was a lot of other people who were maybe more wanting a beginner level. I'd played with some of them before and it seemed like they might need more time. Um, so we started playing, we, we settled on a, uh, a representative democracy with a strong social, a fanatic socialist president. Um, so that doesn't mean that the president's necessarily a fanatic, but it's based on the dictator rules. So whoever's president can beat anyone in a fight without having to roll or do anything. Um, and and the goods are all distributed by this one person, and then you we get to vote on another president. And we kind of fell into the habit of um, voting on a new president each turn, just to kind of keep the balance of power going. And it ended up being kind of a, a co-op style game, because the president had an incentive to, um, to 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 do a good job, right? And everyone. And we were doing well, but we weren't doing so well on radio signals. And so it came down to um, someone had to die. <laughs> and so I gave it to, I kind of lobbied to get the, the kind of cutthroat player to be president because <laughs> there's this whole ongoing story where he kept like asking questions specifically about how you kill people like from the start of the game and about like stealing things <laughs> and stuff like that. And so I was like, okay, someone's got to die. Everyone's playing nice. He's the guy to do it. And so he um, distributed the goods in such a way that someone had nothing because he knew there was going to be a vote before he would get to enact violence and just kill someone. Um, and it was the grasshopper player who got nothing. And the grasshopper, didn't, just by virtue of her track, didn't produce as much. Um, oh, and the grasshopper player and another player jumped in in the middle, which was kind of fun to see how we could work that. And it, it worked pretty flawlessly. We just gave them experience numbers for the turns they missed, and they didn't have as high points, but, you know, that's, that's how it is. Um, and so he didn't get to be president. I got voted in president after that. Uh, so the person who had their goods take, taken away then initiated violence against him and it got to be this two-on-two -two battle. I stayed out of it because I just wanted someone to die. Um, and it ended up that the grasshopper died. Uh, the other player who had sided with her was too valuable to lose. And then we got rescued right after that. So really great story throughout. And um, some people really liked the game, some people didn't. But 
the fact that the, the people who really liked it really liked it. Um, uh, I know I shouldn't care so much about what everyone thinks, but it means something to me when other people can see the, the appreciate things in a similar way that I can. It makes me, yeah. Anyway, so I played that, then played Battlestar Galactica. I got the loyalty deck wrong. I keep doing that. Um, it was someone else's copy, so there was all these cards shuffled in that we weren't going to play with, and I pulled them, was pulling them out, and then I like thought I saw one of the cards that was not supposed to be in there, in there, but it turned out it was a UR Cylon card. So we had one too few Cylons, which made for an interesting, like kind of paranoid story because we're like, we know there's another Cylon out there, but you know, so we ended up with a couple people in the brig who were humans. And the humans won pretty easily. Um, the Cylon player wasn't too forthcoming, even though it was a Cylon through the whole game. It was fun. It was fun, and I don't think the mess up really messed up the game. I think everyone still enjoyed it, enjoyed the process of it. Then after that, what did I play? I played Zombie Side. Um, this was. I played this mainly so I wouldn't have to play any arbitrary game, because I think it was the only one being offered. And um, I never played it before. It, the images on it and just kind of the presentation makes me think it's not to, it's not something I would get. But um, I do enjoy games where there's just this kind of story that can develop. Um, and it did. It, we had characters. And it, oh, and uh, another reason was it was like this epic setup. So that was cool. There was two kind of different games going on, but um, what happened in one game affected the other game. So we had to go and like my group was trying to rescue this doctor from a prison. He was a bad doctor, but he was a medical professional and we need that in the zombie apocalypse. And the other group had to like power the doors so that we could open them and rescue him. So it was, I mean, it's, it's tough. There's a lot of zombies. Um, but I was this, this girl on roller skates, and I could go really fast, and I'd go zoom, zoom, zoom. And that was great. Um, uh, some people got annoyed with me, which was also great. So there was emotion there. And where emotion is present, there is life. And um, we ended up winning. Um, my character was amazingly effective for how annoying she was, which I also appreciated. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Um, and then after that, I think I played a five-person game with Innov of Innovation, um, which is a very chaotic, almost operatic experience for a verbose abstract. Um, and it was a lot of fun. I know I say that about all the games I played. They were all a lot of fun today. Um, and that's it. I'm going back tomorrow. Tomorrow's kind of the chill day. Convention ends early, um, but it's free, so it might actually be busier than it was last year because it was advertised that today would or tomorrow would be free. Well, it's actually today because it's past midnight. So we'll talk about that tomorrow. See ya.